Hey everybody, this is Strange, and I'm here to talk about the new feature we're rolling out for Pro Playground, and that's the integration of storage locker units into uh, the Playground suite of tools. Uh, so the problem that I have uh, a lot when I work on my uh, roster is that remods are too expensive, and it's not very easy to remod a single unit. Uh, when you start to use the automation tools, what they do is uh, they start changing mods at a high level and then those changes trickle down and next thing you know your entire roster has different mods. Uh, applying those mods uh, costs a lot of credits and you also have to free up a lot of space. So um, I personally, even though you know I work on the tools a lot, I don't remod my roster that often with Playground. I, I tend to do it every few months because it's so expensive. Uh, so the solution that we wanted to roll out was to allow you to define units that uh, have important mods set on them uh, that you, you don't want to change all the time, kind of less often, and then define units that have unimportant, uh, that are unimportant to your roster. You want them to have good mods, but you're willing to give those mods up for the important units, um, and you don't really want to spend lots of money remodding them. So we're going to keep single unit automation is, is going to pull mods from the unimportant units and the unequipped mods. Um, and uh, the unimportant units, when you pull mods off of them for now an important unit, uh, you're going to replace the lost mods with um, only those slots that they got pulled from. You're not going to re-automate all six mods on them. So for instance, if uh, you remod a, a character, we're going to do Droideka in the example. If Droideka ends up pulling a mod off of, um, you know, Finn, for instance, if he pulls the, the square slot, uh, when you re-automate Finn, you only want to replace Finn's square slot, uh, not all six of his mods. Uh, and the result will be less cost to you, less change. Uh, when you're doing the automation, but you'll still be able to make use of, of some of the automation tools the Playground has. So let's go ahead and first talk about how you define a unit as a, a locker uh, unit mod. So locker unit, I know it's kind of, um, the, the terminology can get a little bit confusing. You can lock a unit's mods, and that's when you have this little lock key uh, on. And what that does is it prevents uh, when, during automation from moving you know these units mods at all because you've you, you know you found a good set you don't want these to ever change and then there's the 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 concept of a storage locker which is like these are units that you're just putting mods on to kind of fill space and they're le they're less important and you can pull mods off of them so um, if I scroll down toward the bottom you'll see that I have a number of units defined as storage locker units. Um, you can kind of see they're a little grayed out in Playground. Uh, that's because I define them as storage locker units in mod maintenance. Uh, we've rolled out that concept and units that are storage lockers are going to be universal throughout our tools. So if you do define them as a storage locker unit in mod maintenance and then come into Playground, Playground will now um, identify them as storage locker uh, units. So there's a couple ways you can change uh, a unit setting. Uh, let's say, for instance, uh, I want uh, Imperial Super Commando not to be a storage locker um, anymore. I would just click on this little. Uh, lo uh, it's a um, looks like a looks looks like a uh, drive like a looks like a garage. So if I click on this, I'm prompted. You know, do I want to leave the unit in the current position? Um, and do I want to automate them? You know, I'm going to leave these blank for right now. I just go ahead and click OK, and that's going to toggle him to be a normal unit. Um, if I want to set him to be a storage locker, I would just click on this lock symbol right here, and that's when I'm asked, do I want to lock his mods or do I want to make him a storage locker unit? And uh, then I'm prompted, do I want to move his uh, priority 
uh, I'll go ahead and leave him in the current priority position and go ahead and click OK and that'll tog toggle it. Uh, now there are some options here, like let's say I take, um, you know, uh, Bachelor Sean and I want to make her a storage unit. I can go ahead here and say make storage unit and I can leave her at her current position or, you know, I tend to like to keep the storage uh, locker units all toward the end. So I could move her to the first storage locker unit here um, and go ahead and click OK and it would move her down right before Imperial Super Commando. Now, um, I could go ahead and if I had her over here, and let's say this is your first time defining units as storage locker units, you can go ahead and hit the lock button and you can make her a storage locker unit, leave her at the current position, and then you could say mark all units after this as a storage locker unit. And what that'll do is it'll take Bastila Sean and all the units afterwards and turn them into storage locker units. Um, so that's how you flip them to. Uh, the other way you can do it is if you take a unit that is in you know, the storage locker units and you drag them up to an area that isn't storage locker units, it'll prompt you and say, hey, do you want to remove the storage locker status? You can check that and click OK. Um, or if you take a unit, for instance, that is not a storage locker unit, you drag her down below, the tool will say, you know, do you want to set it to a storage locker unit? And I could go ahead and click OK and it'll flip it to a storage locker unit. Uh, so let's show you an actual example and, and talk about the automation changes that have happened. Um, in my example, I just applied the Omicron to Dredeca. Uh, we're going to be using him in Territory Wars. So he's now increased in importance. He used to be a storage locker unit for me because I didn't use him that much. But now I'm going to make him more important. So I'm going to take him from the storage locker area and I'm going to move him up. I actually want him to have fairly decent mods and I'm going to drop him right here. Uh, the tool is going to prompt me. It says it's currently a locker unit. It's been moved up. Do you want to remove the locker status? I'm going to say yes. And then it's going to say, do you want to run automation? I'm going to go ahead and say yes right now. So I click OK and that will run the automation for uh, Droideka. Uh, now, previously, if I had done that, if I had just dragged Droideka up to here and then clicked on his unit sheet, which was this little square with the pencil on it, uh, and hit the automate button, the pool of mods that it would have pulled from would have been Droideka right here and any mo any unit afterwards. So it would have pulled mods from Cassian, Qui-Gon Jinn, Biston, uh, etc. Any unit that was lower in priority. The change in the behavior that we have that we're rolling out with this release is that if you do single unit automation, which is to click on this little square and hit automate or the automation option that you get when you drag and drop it, it's it's only going to pull it from the locker units. So Imperial Super Commander, any unit that's basically uh, grayed out, you've defined as a locker unit and unequipped mods. So if I go ahead and click here, you see, um, you know, Mostly it's using the mods that he had, but it did pull a mod, a mod off of Cup uh, here and uh, a TIE Fighter Pilot here uh, because both of those units are uh, considered uh, locker units. Now, it's not, you know, doesn't totally follow your priority order because, you know, in some cases you may have wanted it to, you know, pull mods off of Embo, but by doing it this way, um, it will reduce drastically the remodding cost and pain that you have when you're remodding units. Um, if you want to change that behavior, if you want it to go back to the old way, go ahead and to go into settings and under all options, there's going to be two settings here that we added. One is only use locker unequipped mods on single automate. And the second one is only fill locker units, uh, minimize, minimize mod swapping. And I'll show you what that means in a second. So if you don't like the new changes, you want to put it the old way, just go ahead and toggle these both off. But um, I thought that it was a pretty good change to the way the system worked. So we're going to turn them on by default. So you are going to see some different behavior by default. Uh, now, if you click the automate button up here, that's going to be a full roster automation. So that's going to work the same way as it did before. It's just going to take all the mods in the pool and it's going to remod from top to bottom. So if you're wanting to do a full roster remod, go ahead and click this automate button and it'll do top to bottom. But the change is 
you know, when you found a, one single new unit or maybe two or three units that um, weren't as high in priority and you've moved them into the higher priority area. Uh, so let me go ahead and, and we'll find, um, uh, go back to Droideka. And you kind of see here that he pulled mods from Cup and you see that he moved mods from TIE Fighter Pilot. So um, now those are two units now that have had mods pulled off of them. So, you know, what you would do in the old ways, you'd fry, find those units. We could go ahead and go here and, and, and go to the changed filter and you'll see, or, or you can use probably the, maybe the missing, um, maybe this is a, a better one. Uh, uh, let's think it's up top, missing mods. You know, these are the two units that have missing mods because we pulled them up. Now, if you, in the past, were to go here and automate, it would fill this in, but it would probably pull a mod from another unit. And then you'd have to go to that other unit and automate them. And you'd have this kind of cascade effect of pulling mods off of units, and then, you know, the cost would add up. You'd have, uh, it would be expensive to do a full remod. Now, what we have now is the automation. If I go ahead and, and automate here, that other setting is it's only going to replace, try to replace the mod that got pulled off. So it's gonna to try to leave these six and only replace the square. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll do automate um, and you'll see it left these five mods and it only replaced um, the, the square here. So that's gonna reduce my remodding cost. So I'll go ahead and click okay. Um, you could do that unit by unit. We've also added a button here uh, under the automate flyout, which would be to automate locker units. So what you might want to do is you might want to go ahead and use the the single unit automation for the four or five that you're you're moving up, or the four or five that you're moving into locker units, and then you can go ahead and finish up by doing the automate locker units. That's kind of like the fill that we have on the loadout screen, but it it uses the weights and the you know attempted automation that it has before, it just won't pull mods off of units. So it's gonna reduce the, the remodding costs that we have. And that's pretty much it. Um, this change is intended to make it easier to remod one or two units with, without causing um, huge uh, catastrophic changes in your roster. Um, hopefully it'll let you leverage some of the, the playground tools um, and step into it without you know having to, to redo everything in your roster. Um, so again, if you wanna do full re roster remod, you're gonna to wanna to hit this automate button. You're gonna to wanna to use playground. If you want to maybe automate one or two units that have become important, you can use that drag and drop, that single unit automation from here. Um, and if you find new mods through your daily farming and you want to use those new mods and find a good home from them, that's where maintenance comes into play and you might want to try maintenance out. Um, there's a video on that. You can check it out. But uh, I hope you guys like the new tool. I think it'll uh, at least help me use um, Playground a little bit more with all the datacrons and the new units coming into the game. Uh, I want to be able to remod a couple units here and there without drastically overhauling my entire roster.